This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. In every way, we're back. We're back from our trip. That's one thing, we're back. <laughs> In fact, next hour, Carol Mungli and I are going to do a retrospective on what it's like to go to uh, Alaska by a cruise ship, you know. She went you know, serendipitously one week, and I was there the next week, and we didn't, neither of us realized that we were going to be there on the same ship, the same trip. So we're going to compare notes and see who had a better time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and today we're going to talk about opera, and I love opera. I've been going to the Hawaii Opera Theater since, oh, since I could, <laughs> way back, 1970 or thereabouts, that I started going. And one of the people who sits right near me in the <laughs> opera is Lynn Johnson. That's right. And, uh, a couple uh, rows behind on the left, I think. Yeah, we yeah. wave to each other yeah, each time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so happens that uh, Lynn Johnson teaches about the opera. She teaches about each separate opera. She teaches on the lanai, on, I guess you'd say, the Eva lanai of the, of the opera house there in place. Uh, Ward Center. Ward? Ward lanai. They Ward call. lanai. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she, she tells you about the opera in advance. And, uh, you know, it really helps to have somebody explain it to you in advance, tell you the plot, the high points you should be looking for. She's also a professor at the School of Music in UH Manoa. She yes, I was. I was going to teach uh, this year, and I finally retired. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go. Well, that a, way you can spend so, more time with us. That's right. But I do, I'll continue doing the opera talks and teaching okay. classes I hope about so. opera. It's a big, yes. big thing for me. Yeah. So, welcome to the show, Lynn Thank Johnson. Thank you. Very happy to be here. It's great to have you here. It's great to talk about Carmen. Carmen's coming up. So, let's first, let's get it off the deck. Carmen is playing, what, October 13th, 13th 15th, 15th, and 17th, and 17th yep. at, at uh, the Blaisdell. Blaisdell. You bet. Um, and it's one of the ABC operas. You remember that, of course. Yes. Uh, Aida. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bohem. Bohem, Bohem of course. B for Bohem. <laughs> my personal favorite. I always cry at Bohem. I cry at all of them, actually. Uh, and Carmen. Carmen will always touch you. It's got so, so much energy, so much feist. You know, and they're real people almost. almost. Oh, it's a fabulous <laughs> opera. It's a, and that's why we bring it often yeah, back. Yeah. I mean, it's just so, it's so emotional, and the music is amazing. Yes, it is. Yeah, and it's amazing. memorable. It's one of those operas where you walk out humming the tunes. That's right. You want to hum anything now? Da 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 dum bum bum da 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 dum. That's from one Carmen. Of them. That's from Carmen. <laughs> and there are many others like that. And the people are, you know, they're they're so they're real in their own way. You know, you 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 can slip into their skins. The good guys and maybe the not so good guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk let's talk about H O T for a minute. What is H O T? What does that stand for? And uh, how long has it been around? And what does it do? Well, Hawaii Opera Theater has been around. Well, I think it. I think. In its own skin, it's maybe been around since 1970, something like that. Uh, before that, it was part of the Honolulu Symphony. Uh, yes. And you had part of the board that were opera people, and you had part of the board that were symphony people. And finally, the opera people decided to break off. Good and it was, in the, it was in the 1970s. Yeah. And, um, and since then, it's been on its own. And we do typically three operas every year. Um, now we've added a fourth, a chamber opera. So we have three big ones at, uh, at Blaisdell. And then this year, in a couple of years so far, we're adding a small opera in a more intimate setting uh, that doesn't run as long and is usually a modern opera. So the, the new opera we're going to be doing this year was actually written, had its debut in 2014. Oh, wow. That's three 2014. years ago. 2014. something. And as a matter of fact, um, I don't know if we can maybe show a picture sure, of it. Sure, we can. Um, from, I think it's called As One. As One. And can we find As One and show that? I'd like to see that, too. So get a description of it. There we go. As there, One. Uh, there, As One. Now, you look at that and you think, what is that all about, you know? Yeah. Well, you got Sasha Cook, who happens to be a cousin of mine. Is that right? And okay. she is an amazing she singer. Local? She Her father grew up here. He could not keep a tune in a bucket. He cannot sing Happy Birthday in tune, <laughs> but he loves singing, and here he is, oldest opera has become this fabulous mezzo-soprano. And this is her husband, Kelly Margraf. They are going to be doing this opera. It consists of these two people and a string quartet. It lasts about a one minute, uh, an hour and a half. It's all about a transgender. Interesting. And, That's very modern. And her husband plays Hannah before, and the wife 
uh, Sasha Cook plays Hannah After. And it's all about self-identity, about finding your true identity, about there's humor, there's pathos, there's, it's, it's an amazing opera. And, that's and it's very edgy, and it's going to be in January. January, okay. Yeah. So uh, is that part of a season ticket? It's part of a season ticket. And by the way, I have to put in a plug. If you are a new opera goer, or you've never actually bought a season ticket before, you can get the whole season for half price. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, the whole that's a, season. That's a good that's move a on really, everybody. So win -win. And I've been calling my friends and saying, you got to do this. Yeah. And you call Gaylene Williams at the opera and and uh, at the opera box office, and you tell her Lynn sent you, <laughs> and you get this half price. Remember that yeah. Lynn sent you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah. sounds like a great yeah. bargain. I wonder if I can be a first time. No, well, I can't you can't. Do that. You can't, no, you can't no. do that. But Doesn't you, <laughs> you and I. But we've had the the luxury of knowing all these operas yeah. all this time. Yeah. And the other ones are going to be playing. Um, you have, uh, of course, you have Carmen, and then you're going to have. Um, as one, and you're going to have um, the daughter of the regiment. Oh, sure, that be played before. That's, I went to that's that. by yeah. Donizetti. That's yeah. in French. Yeah. And first one is in French, even though it's set in Spain. Yeah. And then you have Eugene Onegin, which is going to be in Russian. And these it's are Tchaikovsky. Operas. These are these are bad. It's all beautiful, yeah. beautiful music. And so you know, in Carmen, she dies. In the daughters of the regiment, she gets married. And <laughs> and Eugene Onegin, well. It's kind of in between. It's she doesn't Russian. die, but it's very <laughs> Russian. But it's, you know, she doesn't get the guy she wants. She gets somebody else. And he found out too later that she was the right girl. And so it's kind of a little bit in between. And then in, uh, in, in As One, he becomes a girl. And she's very happy. There's the always end. a transformation. <laughs> There's always a transformation. <laughs> why, why do I feel so impassioned at operas? What is it that makes me feel that way? It nearly, well, at most operas, I feel that way. Well, you know. Opera is the most, to me, exciting genre of music because it has everything. You have, you have the orchestra. So those of you who love symphonic music and all the instruments, you have that. And then you have the voices. And you know what's different between opera and musical comedy? Uh, the uh, voices. It's not, it's not generally not funny. Well, no, no. Some it operas can are, be, it can, can be, be funny. Operas can be very funny. Cozy Fantuti, um, for example. The real difference is the voices are not mic'd. Of course. They're not mic'd in opera. So if you want to be an opera singer, it's not something like law school. I think I'll be a lawyer. You know, you go to school, and you, you either are born with it or you're not. Yeah. So you've got to have the chops. What is it that you have to be born with? The ability to belt it out? Is that what it is? Strength? I think, it's, I think you have to have both the power and the quality of singing. I mean, somebody like Leontine Price, you know, her mother was a maid, right? And, and the, the woman of the house heard this amazing singing going on with the daughters. Your daughter's got this amazing voice. You've got to do something about that, you know? So they're born with it. Yeah, and it's our job to recognize them because they are our musical heroes. That's right, that's yeah. right, that's right. It's fabulous so, so to follow up. I think it's, it's fabulous. And, and of course, it's interesting because it's done in all different languages. And this yeah. year, we don't have anything in Italian, <laughs> which is, is that, unusual. Is that, I guess that's which intentional. Which is unusual, huh? you know. But no, I guess, it, you know, it just happens. You know, we have French and Daughter of the Regiment, written by Donizetti, is actually going to be sung in French because he was in Paris when he wrote it. <laughs> And then as one is going to be in English, and, and then we have Russian. So we have all these, I mean, usually you think of Italian, you think, you know, that's where opera started, right? But, you know, next year it might be all Italian, who it knows? It might be all <laughs> Italian, right. It's really wonderful the way HOT develops these operas. I mean, you, you reach out to the world, yeah. uh, you interview, um, you know, recruit speakers, singers from all over the world. I, I have a list here somewhere of all the speakers, uh, uh, singers that come in. They come in from everywhere. They're part of a, an international network. We have, a, we have an international network. And what's also really neat is that we have some fabulous local talent. So for Carmen, we're bringing in uh, Kate Aldrich, mm -hmm. who'll be fabulous. She was here. But we also have Kip Wilburn, who lives here. Yes. Leon Williams, who lives here. Yes. He and didn't always live here. No, that's he traveled true. here for the yeah. opera to yeah. sing, to star, in, to play in operas over the years, and then decided he liked Hawaii so much he was going to stay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we have some we have some extraordinary talent. And Kip Wilburn will be playing Don Jose. 
Uh-huh. Well, that's the leading role. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's uh, take a moment to uh, to talk about uh, that opera. Sure. Uh, um, this is an opera with um, gee, as I said, a lot of feist, a lot of action, a lot of pathos, um, and it's a story. It's a story that came from a book, which came from a story. That's right. Uh, how, that's how did that, right. How did that generate? Well, right? that's that's interesting. No, there's a a, a wonderful uh, author, 19th century author, French, called Prosper Mary May. And he wrote these things where they were not short stories, they weren't novels, they were in between. So he called them novellas. And Carmen was one of these novellas. And he went to Spain and talked to this wonderful woman who was a countess, and she told him this story about this, this man who, who was robbed by a gypsy, and then the gypsy fell in love with him, he fell in love with her, and then he killed a man on her behalf, and then he found out that she was married, and so she got mad, he got mad, and then she, he killed her husband, and then she fell in love with a Toreador, and then he killed her. And then he was in jail for life because of the murder. Now, obviously, the Carmen that we have is, she different. was not married. <laughs> <laughs> but She's there's not a lot married, of but, similar points. But there's yeah. a lot of similar points. Yeah. And, and I think one of the real is interesting things is that Carmen is a gypsy. And in the 19th century, the gypsies are associated with what they call the other. Yeah. In other words, the woman who is outside of the mainstream. Especially the woman, no? Especially the woman who's outside of the mainstream. And she is exotic. And of course, that was 19th century. You had colonialism, right? And so you had France opening up, you know, learning about the world through all the various colonies. And people like Delacroix wrote these, you know, did these wonderful uh, pictures showing these exotic women, right? And so Carmen is a gypsy, and there shows, you know, that Moorish influence, that, that exotic woman who is dangerous. She represents a threat to the household. So you have in Carmen, the opera Carmen, you have Micaela, who's the good girl, you know? She represents she, the household. She represents the household, the good girl, and, and this is where Don Jose is supposed to end up. He's supposed to end up with a nice girl like Micaela. She comes right in the first act and says, you know, your mother misses you and she's thinking of you. And, and it turns out that, that, that his mother wants him to marry her, you know? And, uh, it's and a girl every mother wants that's every right, son to that's marry. That's right, that's right. And he's, you know, his heart is leaning in that direction. And then he meets Carmen. So and it's like he got crack cocaine. You know, yeah. he's addicted to Carmen, and so he throws his whole life away. And if you're looking at, let's see, a, let's say a, a, a trajectory, maybe Don Jose starts off here, and he ends up down here. He gives up his job, he gives up his, you know, his future, he gives up everything for Carmen. And what does she do? She, she leaves him. She falls in love with a, with the, with a bullfighter. Es, es, esca, es, yeah. Esca, Escamillo. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's it's so the real tragedy is Don Jose. But you can see it devolving. You can oh, see yeah. you can you know yeah. it's it's that it's that that slope the devolution yeah. down, but there are points along the way where you know that Don Jose is losing it. <laughs> well, he makes choices. Yeah. You know, he makes choices. First of all, he tries to ignore Carmen. He can't ignore her. And then because she, you know, she sings the habanera. You can't resist the habanera. That's one, and that's one of the uh, arias? That's one of the arias, right? Yeah. And it's bum, 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 bum. You know, it's a, it's, sure. it's a Russian, it's, that, a, it's, yeah. a, it's a Spanish dance with that wonderful rhythm. But what it does does something really interesting musically. It descends by half notes, which means it goes from white note to black note to white note to black note. And so you're going down this very subtle going down, and it means that, you know what, Don Jose, you're going to fall in love. And what's interesting, another aria that has the same thing is, the, is Delilah's aria in Samson and Delilah. She's another exotic woman, dangerous woman. And they both sing this sort of half note thing, and it's just irresistible. Men cannot Men avoid, can they, just, they just are smitten. Has anything changed since then? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back. We're going to get into those steps that Don Jose goes through, step by step, yeah. till you know, it's all washed up for him. We'll be right back after this break with Lynn Johnson. 
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities. Yeah. We're back with Lynn Johnson. She's a member of the board of HOT, Hawaii Opera Theater, and she teaches, uh, has taught music at the music school. Um, but she gives and will continue to give lectures on the, um, let's see, with the Ward Lanai. Lenore. And Playsdale. also, also, I give talks at the Dorstuk Theater. And this one will be, um, the one for Carmen, I believe, will be on October 4th, 10 uh, o'clock in the morning. Uh, and what I do is not only talk about Carmen, I'll show pictures, uh, do a little PowerPoint, and then I introduce the cast so people get to meet who Carmen is. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You actually have them. And then we interview them and find out how did you get into opera? What is it like to play Carmen? And Kate Aldrich will be there. Yes. Oh, that's absolutely. fabulous. Yeah. So let's talk about the history of Carmen. So it premiered, I guess, in Paris? Yes. In 1875? Yes, yes. It was, a, it was what they call an opera comique. And you know, Paris, the French love opera. They're yes. just crazy about yes. opera. So you had your grand opera, you had your Italian opera, and you had your opera comique. And that was like the Walt Disney studio of opera. You know, you were supposed to go there and have fulfilling family entertainment. And a lot of the times you would have spoken dialogue. So the original Carmen version was with spoken dialogue. So people went to Carmen, went to this movie thinking they were gonna see the Little Mermaid, you know? And it was like they went to see the Little Mermaid and they got Lolita. And, <laughs> and it was, they were shocked. They were shocked, and, 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 and the critics, you know, this is terrible. You cannot have a fallen woman at the Opera Comique. This is and just... This is her. And there, this was um, Celestine uh, Galli Marie. She was the first Carmen. And, she, she looks and like the Carmen you've been discussing. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And here's, here's a description of her. This is kind of fun. It says, because uh, Bizet won, and they apparently had an affair. That's what the rumor was. We don't know. Oh, Bizet okay. is, is this uh, opera star. That's right. Oh, okay. She is small and graceful, moves like a cat, has an impish, pert face, and her whole personality seems unruly and mischievous. Now, to me, that's a perfect, to be unruly. And the thing about Carmen is, is that she is free. You know, and you look at, you look at the, uh, uh, the 19th century woman in Europe. She can't own property. She can't vote, right? She's the property of her husband. She cannot marry unless her father gives approval. And so here's Carmen, who's totally free. She does what she wants to do, and nobody tells her what to do. And this kind of independence, men want to control it, right? And well, she uh, won't let, she is free. Don't you think that made it popular? You know, people had oh. these, these you know, urges, uh, these, these aspirations to be free, and just gave them a That's chance to right. live that out? Sure, sure. I think, I think. I think a lot of women were both threatened by Carmen and envious of Carmen, <laughs> yes. right? Shocked by her, did, judged her, but then secretly perhaps were envious. Yeah. And now yeah. the man in, uh, I, I want to say Victorian, Victorian times, because Victorian England was not only in England, it was in France too, and Spain, I think. Um, so uh, you have a fellow, Don Jose, he's, uh, he's, he's got some prestige. He's got an important commission in the Spanish army, I guess. 
Yeah. Um, and he's brought low. He's brought and, low. And that's, and that's another twist. Yeah. You expect him to be rising and in control, mm -hmm. controlling women anyway, and he doesn't. Yeah. He falls yeah. apart. He falls apart. Yeah. And it's just like I said earlier, it's like, it's like a, an addict, yeah. you know? And you give your, when, you, when you're an addict, you can't tell right from wrong. And all you want is your obsession. And he becomes obsessed with Carmen. So there's, um, there's a thing, she gives him something. She gives him a rose. That's right. Uh, hence the association of a red rose with Carmen. Mm -hmm. It's part of, part of the symbolism of that. What's the red rose? Is that, that's a, a seduction. It's a tease. a tease. It's a tease, isn't it? Yeah, and she shows it to him later because she, he becomes a challenge for her because he ignores her right off the bat. He yeah. ignores her. Yeah. Yeah, and so she's, she's determined to, and then of course, I mean, and she's a lowly woman. I mean, she works in a cigarette factory. And not only that, she's, she's arrested because she's cut up the face of some other, some other worker there. She's been in trouble. She's been in trouble, and she's violent and unpassioned and unruly and undisciplined. Yeah. You know, what more could you want in a woman? <laughs> and, and cigarettes, cigarettes, and cigarettes. It must be a symbolism in the cigarette factory itself. Not like today. I mean, you, you wouldn't want anybody you know working in a cigarette factory today. But I suppose in then it had a it had a moral overlay of some kind, could, right? Could. And uh, so she's uh, cigarettes are not for women. Women weren't smoking cigarettes yet. Men were smoking mm -hmm. cigarettes. So it's it's again sort of a, a freedom thing mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. that she should be working in in a place where men have their have their freedom, but women don't. You know. So the the um, then there's this this issue. I'm just stepping down mm -hmm. those points where he loses it, uh, where she refuses to answer um, the, the senior officer when he asks her questions. And as a result, he has her arrested, or he tells Don Jose to arrest her. Yes, he has to tie her up. Zuniga, I guess, is his boss, and so he, she has to, he has to tie her up. And of course, what she does is, is basically talk him into letting her go. Yeah. And so he lets her go, and then he has to go and, you know, spend some time in prison for being disobedient. So that's the first choice he makes. You know, he makes these choices. And uh, so that's the first one. And, but, you know, you think he'd learn after that. You think he'd learn. And then he sees her again, and she's entertaining these, these, uh, these other officers, and, and um, she bewitches him again. And it comes time for him to be called back. The bugle is there, and he's supposed to go back and be with the regiment. And he has a choice. He can be a good guy and go back and do his duty, or he can stay and stay with Carmen. And then, and then all of a sudden, this other Zuniga, his officer, comes in looking for Carmen. And I think Don Jose is jealous. He thinks, what's, what's going on between the two of them? You know, ah, it's, 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 and so it's and not a so, one woman, yeah, one it's just it becomes very complex, and all of a sudden he's in the fight with his boss, and and then some smugglers appear, and they withhold, they hold his boss and restrain him, and all of a sudden he's got to go. And so then he, he makes has that to go choice, off and he goes he off no with choice. the So he's now given up his respectability. He's given up his respectability, and the final choice comes when when. Uh, I think um, his girlfriend comes to the camp where Carmen is, and Carmen's now beginning to get interested in the in the uh, in the bullfighter. Micaela, what a wonderful name, Micaela. Micaela, she's beautiful. It's it's, it's, it's angelic, isn't it? it? Is. It's in it there is. somewhere That's is the right. notion of angelic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Micaela. And she's uh, asking him to return, return to, to, to her be mother. with the, you know be with the mother, and he goes back with her. But then Carmen, he goes to the bullfight to see Escamillo and he knows that Carmen's going to be there and he sees Carmen so he can't resist. He knows him. it's a showdown. He knows it's a showdown. He and, knows it's a and showdown. he loses. Yeah, he loses. And the thing is, you know that somehow Carmen, she preserves her liberty. She, and even she knows, I mean, there's this wonderful scene, I think, in the camp where uh, Miss Mercedes and uh, Fasquita, her friends, are playing with the cards and they, they're reading each other's futures and stuff like that. And one's going to get a great man and one of them's going to do have something and then they read Carmen's and she's going to die. 
So that's, that's part. Right. Of, that's part of the gypsy culture. You yeah. know, the fortune telling the is cards, part of the yeah. cards, the gypsy culture. But that doesn't deter her. See. She's not going to. She's not going to uh, uh, let go of her freedom, even if she has to die. That's ultimately. right. That's right. So she knows at some level yeah. that she will die as that's a result right. of that's this right. contention between es Escamillo, Escamillo and uh, Don Jose. And you hear what's interesting in the overture, you have this wonderful bump, -da 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 -dum, -da 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 -dum, -da -dum, -da -dum, and then you have fine, um, uh, Carmen's death scene that comes right in that, right in the beginning of that. Uh, of that overture. So you know right from the beginning something's going to happen. Yeah. There's going to be, it's not only fun and games, there's something ominous. very ominous. That's yeah. the word. Very yeah. ominous. Yeah. Yeah. That's a powerful scene. Is it, it, again, down, down, That's down, right. That's then, right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And it's a case where you feel sorry for Carmen, but you really feel sorry for Don Jose because he's ruined. He's ruined his entire life for this woman. And, and you make some assumptions there. You assume, it's never on the screen, so to speak, but you assume that if he killed, if he killed her, which he do, does in the final moments of the opera, um, he is going to go to jail for a long time. Oh, yeah. He can't escape that. Oh, yeah. Just the way earlier, you assume uh, that um, if he lost her as a prisoner, he would pay a price. Yes, that's right. And Whether it was his fault yeah. or not. You know. It was his fault. <laughs> well, you know, that's a, that's a, to me, that was always a vagary. Mm -hmm. um, does, does the, uh, what's the name of the character who's his boss? It begins with Zuniga. His... Zuniga is his boss. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, you assume that, I, I assume that he figured out that, that, that Don Jose let Carmen go voluntarily. Mm -hmm. It's never spoken, but it's kind of an assumption there. Uh, and it's never, it's never actually said, but you assume that he knew that Don mm, Jose let her mm -hmm, go voluntarily. Mm -hmm, yes. And so yeah. you're, you're asked to you know, build in some assumptions in how this is de degrading. <laughs> uh, you know, and what's, I think what's really interesting is, is that you, you say it's a matter of choices, Lynn, but it's somehow, it's, it's not. Somehow he's on a track where he that's can't right. help himself. That's right, that's right. And that's, it's, that's why I compare it to crack. You know, somebody who's addicted to heroin, uh, they no longer have free will, and that's the way yeah. Don Jose is. He is he is totally obsessed with Carmen. She she brings him, and I think she brings she represents such passion and such highs, and he's never known anything like it. Right? He's never known that kind of passion in his life, and he will do anything to have that in his so life. So he has his own yeah. freedom in a, yeah, a, a left-handed way. way. And 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 so that's true. I mean, he's giving up conventionality, right? He's he's giving up the proper life to have this wonderful, adventurous life, and it has a price. They are both ahead of their time. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what can we learn from all this? Uh, we can learn that a, that a perfectly uh, French Frenchman can write an opera about what takes pl place in Spain. That's right. In 1850, certainly. Yeah, well, of course, it was, you know, he had wonderful librettists, Halavi and I think another one, but, but he, you know, he, put, he fell in love with that idea. He just fell in love with the, with the whole concept. And he was inspired, you know, that habanera that happens right in the first act, which is one of the great arias of all time. Um, he rewrote it 13 times. Yeah. And it's been polished not only by the rewriting of the libretto, but, but by the stars yes. who, bring, who create the culture of the character. Yes. They portray the character in one way or the other, like the, the one in the photograph, the, the first, uh, what was her name? Oh, Gali Marie. Yeah, Gali yeah. Marie. Celestine I mean, Gali Marie. And you know what's interesting is that B him, Bizet himself, Georges Bizet, who's the composer, is a tragic figure because he died before Carmen became a hit. And so he assumed that it was complete flop. And the first, I mean, the first production uh, debuted in, in uh, March of 1875, ran for four and a half hours. The last act didn't begin until after midnight, right? And, and, these, and it's too long. Too it's long. just too long. <laughs> and a lot of it was in English. I mean, not a lot, not English. A lot of it was spoken and so on and so forth. And, 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 the, and the audience was kind of like, well, I don't know. And the critics just banned it. And they just assumed, he just assumed she, you know, he put his heart and soul into this thing. He assumed it was a flop. He died three months after the premiere. Uh, that's a tragedy, And he was only 36. Too. And it was, so it didn't become a hit until it went outside of Paris. 
Ah. And then, and of course, over time, they got rid of the spoken dialogue, um, substituted for substituted recitative, and of course, shortened it. And uh, and so, in a way, there's no absolute definitive version of the opera <laughs> because he died before you know the final thing what came out. What was the music? The music we hear the today. Music the music we will hear on yes. October. October 13th, 13th yeah, at HOT 15th and 17th. will be the music at Bizet Road. Oh, of course. Yeah, which, he which wrote all the music. Yeah. 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 I have to go. Of course I have to go. Oh, no yeah. Question. I'll see you there, yeah. and I'll wave at you just like this, like Absolutely. I always do. And I, I look forward to that. I look forward to the opera. In fact, I'll be on the lanai. Okay, I want to hear well, what come, you have yeah, to say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, there's always something to learn, and this is what I love about uh, being a musicologist, is that the more you know, the better it sounds. Isn't that true? Yeah. Uh, the more yeah, you the learn, more so you it's learn, the more you learn about the, the background, the, the arias, the, the plot, the characters, um, the more you pay attention and the more you take in because opera is just a conflagration of, of invading your senses. You have, you, have the, you know, have the singing and then you have the, the, the music and then you have the sets. And, and now um, opera singers today are fabulous actors. Much so more than before. Much more they than before. It used to be there. you just stand there and you yeah. belt it out. And now you have to be a fabulous actor. Yeah. As well. And they're good looking, they're, they're appealing, good looking, they're, and they play yeah. the role. Yeah. And I can't yeah. wait to see how, how Carmen does in this. Yeah, uh, and Kate we have Kate a Aldrich. picture of our, we should show a picture of Kate Aldrich, who's going to be. Yeah. Okay, uh, why, don't, uh, why don't we show last picture. We're going to show a picture of Kate Aldrich, and you can see who Carmen is going to be. You can compare her with the one yeah. in 18, 1875. <laughs> There she is, and there, I have one other picture of her, too. That's a knockout. Yeah, she's a knockout. And that's, of course, isn't that symbolic? You see that she's on the, the spade there, and the spade symbolizes death, and there's uh, Don Jose who's killed her. So isn't that it, isn't a dramatic it is. photograph? I don't it think is. that we're going to have that production. But, uh, but you know, there's, the other thing I want to tell you is that there are many, many different ways in which Carmen has been portrayed. And I have a couple of different versions of pictures on there, so we can see, because we, we know it was set in Seville. Uh, one version has it set in 18, 1936, during Whoa. the Spanish Civil War. Oh, perfect. Okay? But it's been set in the west of the United States. So um, if you have, I think there's one of a couple of uh, versions of Carmen that, that you have uh, pictures okay. of. Okay, we, we only have a look. minute left, but let's okay. take a look let's at one look of those at, anyway. Let's take a look. Yeah, some, you know, as you said before. There's two, there's two. As you said before, uh, it's a multidisciplinary. Okay. Now you have the one at the top, and you see that she's in a convertible, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. And this is in the west there. And then on the bottom, this is the one that was just done in uh, Aix-en-Provence, and it's basically it's set in the 20th century. And this is a couple that needs uh, marital help, and so they go and play the role of Carmen. And he plays, you know, the, the husband plays Don, jo, Don Jose, and then there's another woman who plays Carmen. And, of course, it gets, they get carried away, right? <laughs> so this is couples therapy. <laughs> it's, a, it's an opera for all seasons. It's an opera for all seasons. Absolutely all seasons. Thank you, Lynn. It's Thank been you wonderful very to much. talk to you. Yeah, what I a will pleasure. see you soon, I promise. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Jay. Aloha. Lots of